Hey everybody, Spaceman here with another episode of Spaceman Climbs. This will be episode 3, and as you can see we're on Echo Isles. I am playing on the northeast side, and I have spawned as Undead. And my opponent is Xenon, Z-E-N-O-N, -E and he is playing Human in the northwest corner. So as we can see, I'm not going to watch from his perspective, but he's immediately going to scout. So that's one of the advantages you get from playing random. Your opponent has to scout as quickly as possible to know what they're against. But we're going to primarily focus on, again, my gameplay throughout these. So as you can see, I'm opening with a Crypt Graveyard build, which means next I'll be building a Ziggurat, and then I'll be building an Altar, and it's your delayed hero build typically in order to build Crypt Fiends. This is what you'll see most of the time when players are going Death Knight into Fiends, because this way when your hero spawns, you'll have your Tome of Relics out, so you can immediately get your Rod of Necromancy, and you'll also have um, two Crypt Fiends, so you can quickly start creeping. However, I like to do this build for Ghouls, and you're going to see that's what I'm going to do. So even though I've done the Crypt Fiend opening, I'm using this ghoul to kill the peasant because I'll be able to chase him down. This will prevent the peasant from building a scout farm right here or right here, which is always a pain, right? By doing this, my, my opponent is going to lose a peasant. I won't gain any experience for killing it, and I would will lose some wood harvesting time because obviously my one ghoul has been over here as opposed to harvesting wood. But again, I'm going a ghoul build despite my fast crypt graveyard, so... For that reason, I'm not going to be too strapped on wood. I'm not too worried about it. Doing this with a ghoul build allows you to get a lot of ghouls out early. It throws your opponent off a little bit because they see this and they're going to expect that you're going for crypt means. And once your hero does come out, you're going to have a very big power spike because you'll have five or six ghouls. And as you're about to see, I'm going to go Dreadlord. So I love going Dreadlord first. It doesn't matter what race I'm against, Dreadlord is one of my favorite heroes just because of sleep. The strength of sleep early is amazing. It essentially just communicates, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but sleep early communicates, don't harass me, right? Archmage and a couple footmen are able to do a lot of harassment early if they play it right, but against uh, Dreadlord and Ghouls, uh, the human player will just have to run away immediately because... Sleep Surround is very strong. You don't want to have to use your Teleport early in the game, and and it's almost inevitable that the Surround will happen. Either way, though, I see that I'm against the Mountain King, so this is a slightly different game. Mountain King is obviously a very powerful hero, but Thunderclap is also very strong against Ghouls, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. Uh, but this also does tell me that I don't need to expect early aggression. If I see a Mountain King first and he's creeping the green camp, he's not immediately power creeping here or power creeping here. I see an opponent who is playing a little bit slowly. He's probably going to go for the fast expansion, but um, I do not need to worry about an offensive push coming to me. Really, the Archmage is what makes the human early pushes scary, especially if you can get the Archmage to level 3 and get those level 2 water elementals out. It's, it's really, really difficult. But seeing the Mountain King, I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. I feel like I've got a little bit of space. So my hero's out. I'm going with four ghouls. I've already used a Rod of Necromancy. Did I lose a ghoul? I would have thought I'd have one more. Building another one here, and I'm going to start my tech as quickly as possible. So you can see I, I deliberately got to 210 food, so I'd be able to start my, my tech. Okay, well, I intended to tech quickly. Maybe actually at this point I was thinking... Of potentially throwing down a fast expansion of my own. Nope. I was just delayed on my tech. Not a professional player. My timings are off. Uh, but this is a very easy creep. Obviously with the Ogre Magi asleep, these two trappers can be picked off very easily. And now I'll wake him up with the new skeletons I summoned, so they'll absorb the damage. That's what I should be doing, but the ghoul's absorbing damage. Either way, this is a clean camp. It should get me level 2. Not even. So I don't even have level 2, but I clear this out. I'm now able to expand at any point for the rest of the game. I think there's a lot to be said for clearing out gold mines while you have an opportunity just so that you have an available gold mine to use when you need to. It's so frustrating when you are you know, in a skirmish here or your army's here and all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I have the opportunity to expand. I have the time. This is the, the time to do it. 
but your whole army has to run all the way back to actually creep. That can be a very frustrating. Look at that. I actually was planning on expanding. So at this point, it's a little bit fishy that I still haven't seen my opponent. I am very, very suspicious of the fast expansion. That's what human players do. He crept this and then probably went straight south. Maybe he went for the mercenary camp first. But either way, I'm expecting to see a... Sorry, I'm going to pause it for a second. I'm expecting to see a human fast expansion here. The reason I stopped to creep this was just because this is one of the most neutral creep camps on the map. Obviously, you'll divide the map in half here, right? So these two are the hardest two to get, or they're the most neutral in between. And it's kind of assumed that these camps will all be mine, or these camps will all be my opponents. So if I can grab this one, and this one, and then obviously if I can grab some of his, that's, that's a big deal. So rather than creeping here or creeping here second, I wanted to move out so that I could continue moving on the offensive and I could secure some of the neutral experience. I know he's not going to be able to creep this anytime soon, so I can save those ones nearer to my base for later. Anyway, I'm moving out. I only have four ghouls, one charge on my Rod of Necromancy. I see some footmen, and there's the human expansion with lots of towers going up. So, I'm going to pause it again. So this again looks a little dangerous. He's got a level 2 Mountain King, two circlets, which is really big. Uh, you'll notice I used my Wand of Illusion, so I'm going to have a couple extra ghouls here. And this is the kind of situation that I think players can get themselves into a lot of trouble in. Because, you know, what do you focus fire? There are a couple weak footmen that I'd like to kill. But if I prioritize fighting the army and he's microing and using Stormbolt, these buildings are going to get up. Uh, I could try to focus down the main, which I might get a cancel. Don't scratch that peach. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Um, and if I try to get this, I might be able to cancel it, but he might kill it. He'll probably kill a couple of ghouls. Those peasants will still be alive, and he'll just restart power building. Um, because I have such a small army, I have a couple skeletons and everything, though, I decided my priority here was to kill the peasants. So I think you'll see. I'll distract by attacking some of these footmen, but I'm going to prioritize my units to attack peasants by splitting them up. So let's see. Doing that will delay the expansion because he'll have to send more peasants down. It will delay his wood income because more peasants will have to come and he's clearly spent a ton of wood on, on building all of these towers and it'll slow down his deck because tier two he won't have the wood to afford arcane sanctums quite as easily right so my illusions are doing their job buying some time i've lost two of my starting four ghouls here but i have managed to kill that's the third peasant no fourth peasant so i killed every peasant I did not kill a single footman. I lost two out of four ghouls. I probably lost a couple skeletons as well. But look what I've done. He is kind of in limbo here. He has a bunch of half-finished buildings. I'm going for a sleep surround. It's probably a mistake though. Nice storm bolt. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna kill that ghoul. Do I get the footman? Not even. Oh, I might. No, I don't even. The ghoul will probably die as well. So I probably shouldn't have engaged here. I'm now outnumbered in terms of footmen. I lost two ghouls I didn't need to, along with the two ghouls here, which I guess I did need to. I don't mind those. Now he's got two guard towers up, but still no expansion. And let's look at his base. He's still tier one. He's got a ton of wood peasants, but those were built preemptively, I guess. He was prepared for this. But still, now he's down to four wood peasants, and he's going to try to power build, upgrade more towers in tech. He's going to be strapped for wood. Back to my perspective. I grab four more ghouls, which I had here, and I'm moving back on the offensive. And let's just quickly look at my base so I can talk about my strategy. I'm immediately going to tier three now. I have two crypts down. I still haven't tried to expand, so that's wasted gold on the Acolyte, but um, that's done. I'm building a Zig to get to 40, and I'm sure I'll build one more to get to 50. And my play is a mass ghoul strategy. I want to rush down ghoul frenzy and overwhelm my opponent with my tier 3 units or my tier 3 upgrades before he's able to deal with it. So for that reason, losing those two ghouls, those two extra ghouls, is a big deal. If I had sent those back here to heal, I would be at 31 food and, and those little things start to add up when you're going for a big timing push. Anyway, I'm bringing in four more ghouls. 
going to scout out the expansion with my Dreadlord, and I see more peasants. He's going to try to power build it again. So I slept this guy just to, you know, it was a waste of mana, I guess, in hindsight, but my thought process was delay the expansion, delay the expansion. So I'm going to run in with just this small squad. I know I'm not going to be able to compete with his army if he shows up. I know I'm not going to be able to creep anything too big. So at the very least, I can try and get in here and slow things down. So you'll see I sacrifice one ghoul here. Not ideal, but I kill one peasant. I kill a second peasant. I kill a third peasant. Do I get the fourth? And I get the fourth. So I've completely slowed him down again. And this... If we're going to talk from the human player's perspective, he should absolutely have been here. Where is he? Is he creeping? Yep, he's creeping this neutral camp. So he's so far out of position that I was able to, you know, I'm not going to be able to take down all the towers or anything, but I did take down a tower. I killed four more peasants and I lost two ghouls to it. Not so bad. Uh, you know, someone who micros better than me would have been able to keep his ghouls alive probably. But I'm still quite happy with the way that went. Um, human players, when your expansion is vulnerable and in a position like that, and it's likely that your opponent's going to be coming back, you should definitely be camping out around here. Maybe creep this camp. Maybe creep this camp by standing here and pulling them towards you um, so you're in position. But creeping this left them very, very vulnerable there. So I've picked up a Death Knight second. I'm creeping this out, which I probably should have done a while ago. I have 1-1 one, one upgrades on my ghouls, I'm still pumping out more units, and I'm almost tier 3. Hey Peach, not now. Say hi to the camera. Not right now. No. Very weak ghoul, but he's doing his job. And now I'm moving out to creep the mercenary camp. And like I had said earlier, this is going to be very difficult for him to deal with, right? I don't know at this point that he's crept this, so I could be thinking he'll creep this. Before he gets in here, he might creep this. He might think to creep his own stuff. He might take this route. I don't know. This is a very safe spot for me to take right now. And I have a very safe escape route back to my base if he does show up. Anyway, I creep this very successfully. I have Talisman of Evasion on my Death Knight, which is not your typical item that you, you're hoping to pick up. But I'm sure it does its job. You just don't really notice it, right? My Dreadlord is level 3. I have an army of 40 of 50. I'm just finishing Ghoul Frenzy. 1-1 one, one upgrade still. It's a shame these guys are so weak. I decided not to bring them in because they were so weak, even though I do have an excess of void going this strategy. But let's check it out. I pick up a Healing Scroll. Very important. I figured my opponent had a Mountain King, and he probably has Thunderclap level 2 at this point. So a Healing Scroll is going to be absolutely massive. And I'm going to attack his main. I haven't scouted his main in a while, but based on the resources he spent here and based on the you know what I know of human players, they're going to be teching soon and they probably will not have as many towers at their main at this point in the game. And ghouls are obviously susceptible to towers. So I wanted to get in here and just like I expected, his base is completely vulnerable. No towers have gone up yet because he's been too focused on building towers down south. And so I get in here, and I deal a ton of damage. My opponent teleports in. He's a little vulnerable. He does have level 2 Thunderclap, uh, but I'll keep him asleep. And these trades are going to go incredibly well for me, right? I have the 1-2 upgrades now versus his 0-0. Zero, zero. And he, you know, my opponent didn't play this. Maybe like, you know, Grubby. Grubby would definitely have fared better in the human's position here. But if Micro better made this a little more difficult for me. But I think the takeaway is my ghouls really, really just dominated this, this fight, right? There was nothing he could do at this point in the game. And he's going to have to tap out. Look, oh, he got bashed too. He didn't even get Thunderclap. That's a mistake. If you're going Mountain King first, I know you, of course, want to save your mana for Stormbolt and, and use Bash. But if you see your opponent going a Dreadlord Ghoul strategy, take advantage of that Thunderclap. Either way, though, this was a nice, comfortable kill for me. He's getting a second hero. It doesn't matter. The game's over, and I'm sure he's going to leave right here. So I'll speed it up. And yeah, nice, clean win. Um, but this is this episode, I actually have two replays I want to share with you. Um, so we're going to jump into the next one, which is 3.2, Undead versus Night Elf. 
and this game is going to be very similar. I'm going to go for my same hi Peach, my same uh, Dreadlord Ghoul Tech to Ghoul Frenzy, and I'm going to try to make Ghoul Frenzy work early against a Night Elf player this time. So again, Crypt, uh, crypt Graveyard. Next will be a Ziggurat, and then it'll be an Altar, and we'll move out from there, but I'm going to continue just doing a Ghoul build. There's no Crypt Veins coming out. This allows me, also something I forgot to mention with this build um, in the previous game, and I didn't do it in the previous game, I might here. By doing this, you're able to afford getting Ghoul Strength or Ghoul Army Armor upgrades very early. Almost as soon as the graveyard finishes, you can you can almost justify getting it. And that can really catch opponents off guard. If you have four or five ghouls going in for an early harass and those ghouls have the armor upgrade or the attack upgrade, they do substantially better than they would otherwise. And those little edges too, people don't think to check for them, I don't think. Uh, you know, when I was against my human opponent, I don't think he saw my four ghouls coming in and checked to see the upgrades. I think he would have just engaged assuming this is footmen against ghouls and it would have gone more poorly for him than typically it would with even upgrades anyway standard build going out here um, just for for argument's sake and for discussion's sake let's check out what my opponent's doing standard ancient of war creep what you should be doing as an elf player on this map a keeper of the grove which is pretty standard i'm sure he'll be creeping these out very quickly I don't know if he'll start with Force of Nature or Entangling Roots, but by the time he's crept both, he's going to have both. Which, you know, Thorn's Aura would be great against me as well if he knew I was going for a mass school strategy, but I'm sure he does not. I didn't go for the early upgrade either, it looks like. I'm going to have four ghouls, five ghouls, my tomb... Looks like I built my hero even a little later than normal, just because I'm I'm sloppy. So while that's happening, we might as well watch my, my Night Elf opponent. I'll slow down the speed a bit, just, just to give us something to talk about. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We're going to speed up the replay until my Dreadlord comes out. There he is. So again, I've got sleep. The Keeper shows up with a couple archers, or if he tries to creep jack me... He's going to get slept and surrounded immediately. If a demon hunter shows up, tries to mana burn me and keep me pinned to my base like a demon hunter can against a death knight, and then you're here with two fiends and a death knight with no mana, just they're stuck jockeying with the demon hunter. No, I'm going to sleep him, surround him, and either kill the demon hunter or force him to teleport back and buy myself space. So knights come, I'm going to get myself in position, sleep the Sasquatch, and quickly creep out this item camp. This will give me some alright items, and it will also get me level 2, which is big. I want that Vampiric Aura as quickly as possible. I did pick up a Sacrificial Skull, which seems like a mistake. I'm not going for a fast expansion. My instinct probably was just to click it without thinking. Um, so I might use that in the future, but at this point in the game, I definitely didn't need to spend my 50 gold on that. Lots of skeleton warriors. I'm going to go creeping again, or I'm going to go continue creep, <clears throat> continue to creep. Uh, another thing with sleep early is you're able to creep camps that would otherwise be very difficult for you at this stage in the game. Not this one, but the item camp for sure. This would be difficult to creep without sleep. Rod of necromancy helps a lot, but still, uh, I think also I'm going to go straight from here. We'll go shadows. It's gotten better the items better now that we can hide in the day and I from here I could go and creep this this is a tough camp with the rock golems but I decided to go on the offensive let's see what my opponent's up to immediately I bump into him I see keeper of the grove archers he gets a good detonate on two skeletons so he gains some experience there but that does hurt his wood income right that's a wood wisp that he just lost and I'm assuming he's mid tech that's also 60 gold he lost there so it's not so bad He's coming to do another detonate, gets another two skeletons, so a good trade, but again, that, that hurts him a little bit too. And this sucks. This sucks. When both of my ghouls got ensnared by these creeps, I was I was a little frustrated for sure. And for whatever reason, I, I decided to turn try to turn this and go for a hero surround, which was absolutely a mistake. That's two ghouls lost. This is gonna be three ghouls lost. 
This hero escapes, and at least, at least I got him to teleport out, so I got him to spend that. I also got away with two ghouls, very weak here, so it didn't go well. I'm not happy with that trade, but given that I had two ghouls ensnared and that I went for a kind of stupid surround, at least I was able to force out the teleport. So I gained some ground back, but still that hasn't gone well for me. And now because of those, those losses I just took, I am reduced to creeping another green camp. If I hadn't have lost, suffered those losses, I probably could have come here and crept this very comfortably. Um, I could have even gone over this way or up here, but instead I lost schools. Now I'm, I'm relegated to back right outside my base where it's safe because if he shows up with his army, my dreadlord's in trouble. Um, so it was a, he gained ground there. That wasn't a good exchange for me. Same as last game though, you can see I've already started my tech to tier 3, I am getting some more upgrades, so it's about me at 1-1 one, one, and 2 crypts. I think this game I'm even going to forego the death knight for a little while, we'll, we'll see. Um, but my wood income is is getting... Oh, I wish you guys hadn't seen that, That's, and I should not be losing ghouls there. When you're going for a timing push with your tier 3 upgrades of ghouls, you cannot be throwing them away. Losing those ghouls here hurt. Losing this ghoul here hurt. Losing any more ghouls, it's, it's all going to add up, right? I should be at 37 food, which means I should be at more wood because they'd be at work, which means I'd be more comfortable creeping bigger camps, which means I'd be more able to jockey for position with them on the map. But instead, I find myself with just four ghouls and my hero. And I was thinking, you know, I could creep this. I don't, I don't even have a rod of necromancy because I forgot to buy one. But I'll suffer heavy losses, or at least a lot of damage on my units, and if he shows up, I'm in trouble. I could try creeping this, I could waste my time creeping the easy stuff by my base, but like I mentioned last map, these are mine, right? They're, it's going to be really tough for him to creep these, so I can leave these for later. Um, so while I was here, I decided, you know what, I'm going to push. I know I can't engage his army. I know there's nothing I can really hope to accomplish with these four ghouls and my dreadlord. In terms of uh, again damage to his army but what I can do is keep him pinned in his base maybe I can cancel tech structures if there are any up he's not at tier 2 quite yet so I'm not gonna find his lures or winds but if he were a bit ahead maybe I could cancel them I can kill wisps here but most importantly by being here I am NOT allowing him to be attacking me right he's creeping this or if he's moving out to attack me then I'm going to have free reign in his base and I can kill Wisps, I can attack this. It forces him to come back to my his base, which means I know where he is on the map, which means I'm free to teleport home and then creep these very cleanly because he's not right outside my door. This is a positional attack. This is about buying time and creating space. And so you can see I'm just going for ghouls, I, I mean Wisps, I kill one. Um, am I going to get a second? Probably not, because he's microing them back. I should go for this one. Instead, I just pull out. Do I loop around? I'm a little disappointed with myself there. I, I should have engaged a little a little more. Where is he? Oh, so I was right, though. He's right here in level two. Obviously, if we engage, his level four keeper is going to crush my army, right? We can also see he's crept this, and he's halfway through his expansion. So it's looking pretty good for him. I feel like he's feeling pretty confident at this stage in the game. But I I know I've done... Oh, I was wrong. I do get a Death Knight in this game as well. Unholy Aura is hard to pass up when you're going ghouls. And you do have the resources to afford it when you have skipped a slaughterhouse and you're not going statues. Which is hard to do, right? When you're doing this kind of strategy, it's, it's easy to feel that statues are essential for undead. Especially when you're going a mass ghoul thing. You want that healing, but... They cost a lot of gold when you factor in the slaughterhouse, the timing, and the their, the build time, and the... They cost a lot of resources when you factor in the resources associated with the slaughterhouse and the build time. They cost the build time of the statues, and that eats up your food limit, so you're going to have far fewer ghouls. Well, I guess three fewer ghouls if you have two statues. And that, that really adds up. So I should have run away. I shouldn't have shown my face and then gone to engage his camp. This is exactly what I was talking about at my side of the base. These are his camps and it's going to be hard for me to take and I lose a ghoul because I tried. I didn't need to lose that ghoul, but shit's going to happen. 
I'm pulling a couple more off wood with my death knight to come help with the creeping efforts down here, but I'm leaving a couple on wood because number one, I don't want to show my hand, and number two, I need to keep ghouls safe and harvesting wood because once I commit to my attack, I'm going to have no more wood income for a while because all ghouls will be rallied to the attack. Very easy creep for me here. I'm still sitting on a sacrificial skull for absolutely no reason. I have two cloak of shadows, which is absolutely useless. So I need to do some inventory management, but that'll come. Gloves of haste. Not a great item for either of these heroes, but I'll take them. And my ghoul frenzy is being researched, but halfway done. I still have my 1-1 one, one units. I'm going to have two armor upgrades. And now I can comfortably creep this. He's not going to be able to do anything about it. Unless he shows up right now, but this is a lot of damage. And, oh, look at how much damage this lightning shield is doing. I should not be letting this happen. All of my ghouls are weak. I'm looking for a timing push very shortly, and I just took tons of damage on five ghouls. I lost my other ghoul here, and my opponent shows up. Thankfully, my death knight was close enough that I was able to buy a, a zeppelin, and I can get out like this. Now I've got the Keeper, Alchemist, a lot of Huntresses, a couple Archers right right at my front door. He is out-leveling me. I am 3-1 to his 4-1, I'm sure. Yep. Are his items? His items are very strong. He has 1-1 one, one upgrades as well. And at this point, I don't know, but he does have an expansion attempt uh, as well. So this is looking tough, right? This is looking tight. But I do have the upgrade advantage. 1-2 as opposed to 1-1. One, one. And I have Ghoul Frenzy. So let's see how this fight's going to go. Also, Unholy Aura will be very nice once I get level 2. I have a Rod of Necromancy on just my Death Knight. I should have one on both heroes because that just really will amplify the, the longevity of my army. But You do what you can, right? And I pick up another Healing Scroll because I know that's going to be a big deal here. So my opponent decides to, to push it. I forgot to introduce him, by the way. His name is an again... <laughs> Um, but here we go. The engagement begins. Ghouls start trading. He's using healing spray instead of acid bomb. And I'm going to slow down the, the speed for this fight. This huntress goes down very quickly. Obviously the entangling roots is doing its job. You know what, I don't need to go this slow. Because more or less I'm just going for surface area. I'm not trying to sleep surround anything right now. I'm not trying to pick off one unit at a time. I'm letting my ghouls do their thing. Just kind of flood the battlefield. Look at this, he even had Roar, which plus 5 damage on Huntresses. Look at how well this fight is going for me. When he became available, I went for a Sleep Surround on the Alchemist. Easy pick. We're going to go for one on the, the Keeper, who has an Invulnerability Potion, so he'll get out of this one. But look at how comfortably I won this fight. I wonder, I should have checked what his food limit was at. We jump back, we can't jump back. Hopefully they, they change that with uh, beta where we're able to just jump back in a replay or rewind. I know that's that's tough to program, but it would be nice. I get the keeper surround and kill though, and now my opponent's forced to run back. I won this very comfortably. My army is substantially larger. I'm able to pump out ghouls very, very quickly. And of course, after, after a battle like that, I'm going to push my advantage, right? I killed both heroes, I wiped out his army, I have levels 4 and 3 now, and I believe I got Unholy Aura level 2. I don't need Death Coil level 2 right now, because I'm not trying to pick off units or try to get kills with Death Coil. The only real target I have for Death Coil is my Dreadlord, who's not taking any damage. Level 1 Coil on a Ghoul will effectively bring it up to full health, right? It, 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 when do you need level 2 Coil to heal a Ghoul? So I just got the Unholy Aura, speed up my army, more regen, just make me more dangerous. Um, and now here I am, I didn't bring dust, which is an oversight. Against Night Elf, you should always have some dust on you, especially against Night Elf, who's going tier 1. But <clears throat> it doesn't matter. My ghouls are coming in way faster than he can produce archers. I have my hero advantage. I wiped out his tier 1 army with, with solid upgrades. And... I feel like it's going to be very difficult for him to come back from here, right? His alchemist does show up, which doesn't phase me at all. Like I had the opportunity to sleep around there, and I passed it to, to finish off the Ancient of War first. So now I'm going to move in over here. Easy surround. Well, should be an easy surround on the alchemist. There he goes. He's going to go down very quickly. 
I'm trying to use my my Zeppelin to, to do some ghoul micro and it's working. Level 5 Keeper shows up with a um, rejuvenation potion being used, but sleeps around, leaves the game. So, um, again, I've posted another win or another two wins, so I, I do want to offer the disclaimer that not every game I'm going to post will be a win. It's just sometimes hard for me to watch my own losses. But these were two good wins, both doing the same hard tech to ghouls with no other units involved, and two comfortable wins. I felt very safe throughout the, the entire duration of both of those games so try this one out i think it's a little less viable against orc to do it just because the torn chieftain is so strong blade master can really tear through those units um, but i do experiment with it there as well and uh, what's the last race then i guess undead undead ghouls are pretty standard if you want to try something like that but either way i hope you guys enjoyed this one let me know what you think um, as always, questions, comments, and criticisms are, of course, welcome. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.